Yeah. Yeah. One thing I'd say that's a common misconception is, uh, you know, people think, oh, if I don't make play Division One, then I'll then I'll go D two, as if it's some kind of easy thing to do, or, or D three even, or or you know, situation with Coach Coleman. Um, you know, there there is so much competition, and there are so many good players. And it is hard to find op- opportunities to play college basketball, really, at any level. And I think some people have this uh, perception in mind that it's um, uh, far inferior and, and therefore uh, easy, almost like a, ju- a junior varsity, uh, to play uh, at, at some different levels. And they don't quite appreciate how competitive it is, how many good players there are uh, for so few number of spots, yeah. uh, and realize that uh, – uh, you know, Division Two basketball is really, really good. It's really, really competitive. And even if you didn't get the opportunity at Kentucky, uh, uh, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, DBU is just, you know, going to be an automatic, uh, you know, opportunity. Uh, but it's still very competitive, and there's still uh, a ton of really good players. Uh, so I think that's a big uh, misperception, um, just uh, not, not fully appreciating uh, the level of play and just the depth of, of how – how much talent is out there and how many good players there are that are competing for those small number of spots. Yeah. To kind of piggyback off of what coach Flickner said, um, I mean, it's kind of true of, of all levels. If you're trying to be a championship caliber team at um, in your conference or, or whatever division you're at, you know, if you're in the, um, I don't know, the Southland conference, you're probably trying to go and sign guys that are quote unquote, you know, mid and high major guys. Um, and to, so the top teams in that league are, are doing that. Well, it's the same thing, you know, in the Lone Star Conference or any other top 22 Division II programs. Most of the guys that we recruit um, had some level of, of Division I recruitment. A couple of them had offers and chose to come to us because they wanted a chance to compete for championships. And uh, maybe our, our school, just what our school was about, was a better fit. Um, but that's um, – so we try and find that, that caliber of player um, – and just, I mean, and get them to believe in what we're about. And if you keep getting those guys, we'll continue winning, winning lots of ball games. You know, for you said something for a lot of people that don't know me. Um, I started at non scholarship D3 junior college basketball at North Lake College in Irving. So that was my first job. Then I went to Texas Westland and I was at Texas College in Tyler. So I didn't start at Division One. Um, and I, I would tell people all the time, um, the biggest misconception is that, like, like it's like Coach Flickner says, the B team, or you know what, uh, my child could play Division One when, when realistically, probably couldn't play in D two or NAI or D three. Um, when it came down to it, um, we had uh, when I was at Texas West, my guy went to the Denver Nuggets, and the truth was the only reason he didn't play Division One is because it. He didn't qualify to play Division One, and I would believe that most championship D two rosters are like uh, Ryan said, either kids that just wanted something different, um, whether it be the experience at a school, the location of a school, um, or they had a bad experience and they said, you know what, these people recruited me before, and I want to take a chance to go ahead and uh, showcase my talent back with them. Um, so it's a it's a huge misconception that non-Division One basketball is inferior. Uh, I have been away from it for a while, but I'll tell you this, and it's no knock to any Division One team, but, you know, when you go to play some non-Division Ones, you're real picky on uh, who you pick to come to your gym. And that's, you know, I don't care how good you are because it can be some scary nights um, and some scary halftime talks if you pick the wrong one, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Kind of to piggyback on both coaches, all, all three guys, man. Uh, I, I not only did I have I seen it from the coach's perspective, I saw it from the from the player's perspective, as you mentioned. Uh, uh, being one of the being a highly uh, recruited player uh, early on in high school to going to junior college because I didn't qualify. I mean, I played two years at Kilgore Junior College, and if you know anything about the TEC, that's some of the best basketball there is yes, sir. Um, from there being blessed enough to earn a full ride to go play for coach Flickner at DBU and found out that division two was also some of the best basketball you're going to find. So going from uh, those two levels, uh, like you said, early on, you, uh, when you're, when you're getting those opportunities, you're thinking, man, well, if I go here, I'm going to get a chance to kill. 
then you get in there and you're like, man, this guy's six nine next to me. He was at Florida, one of the top players. This guy was one of the top players in Alabama. This guy, I, I played with. Uh, I think when we were at Kilgore, I w- we were the number five JUCO in the in the country, and uh, we had guys like Marcus Thornton, uh, who played a short NBA career, was one of the top leading scorers out of LSU. I mean, he had some ringers on that team, and I barely got off the floor. I mean, barely got the chance to touch the floor, and that's coming out of the Soto High School where I helped win one of the first state championships. And the uh, same thing mm-hmm. at DBU. I mean, it was the same opportunity, and then to go from there to have uh, a short pro career. So. Uh, from there, uh, like Coach Hester, I had the, I was blessed to coach with uh, Coach Singleton over at Texas Wesleyan, man. So that was a blessing. Yeah. And then to see those guys, man, I mean, where you're at Texas Wesleyan, and you got three kids that were once D1 recruits as well. So um, now being at the NCCAA uh, level, when I took this job, I um, watched a lot of game film on the team because COVID had already hit, so we weren't able to get in the gym. Had an opportunity uh, when when everything first opened up to run in, uh, some workouts with our guys. And we got guys coming in, flying all over the place. I mean, you're thinking, man, if they're playing like this at NCCAA D2, non-scholarship, like, it's tough. It's hard to get it. It's hard to earn a scholarship or even play it at, at, at our level where it is non-scholarship. It's very, very competitive. So you're exactly right. It's hard. It's a lot harder than a lot of kids. And, uh, and I know uh, families believe because – I even see it today while, while coaching grassroots. You know, everybody thinks that their kid is going to play at the next level. Unfortunately, that's not that's not always the case. The thing is, though, also, Jabari, the, everybody just keeps getting better and better. Yeah. I, I went to a couple games at DBU a couple years ago, and I leaned over to my wife. I said, I don't think I could play at DBU now if I, if I was to be recruited then. I don't. And one of the real tragedies of that, too, Jabari, is when – kids have that mindset or parents, sometimes it comes from, you know, from the parents that, you know, this is some type of a lesser thing that, then sometimes they miss out on what would be a better fit. You know, people talk about fit all the time. They use that, that term. And instead of looking at a school for, is this a school that I want to be a part of? Is this the place that I want? Are these the people that I want to be around? You know, they get caught up in, in things that are really born out of a misconception. And uh, when they've got a, a, a a false idea of the basketball side of things that leads them to make, um, you know, less wise decisions when it comes to the stuff that really does matter, you know, and the stuff that, that will, will impact their education in the next 60 years of their life. So that's why the, uh, fighting those misconceptions is important to do. You know, I think that that goes for all levels too. Mm-hmm. Um, um, there's kids that, think that DBU is a death sentence as kids that think that La Tech is, La Tech is a death mm-hmm. sentence. Mm-hmm. And they look at us like, ah, coach, I mean, I just really think I need to go to Duke. <laughs> and and so we all battle with it and deal with it. Yep. But I think as a basketball community, um, we have to just keep educating parents and kids, one, by uplifting um, all schools and all education, mm-hmm. uh, I hate to say this, but especially the free ones. Um mm-hmm because you're not only passing up a chance to play basketball um, at somewhere and probably enjoy your experience, but you're also shunning thousands of dollars that could save your family money. And, and I don't think most people look at it that way um, where you could be, if you come out of school without maybe a student loan. Um, right. I think the, the thing that I kind of dealt with in, in what coach Flinker was talking about is, you know, I was at a school once and I saw a kid walk on at, a, at another level when I was at Tex Westland, as opposed to coming to us as a scholarship kid. Yep. You know? And I, I, I didn't too. get it. And I, I didn't get it. I was like, I, I, I don't understand. But at, at the end of the day, what's so crazy is I ended up going to Prairie View and him and recruiting that kid uh, <laughs> from his walk-on spot at UTEP. <laughs> but, but, but what I told him is you, you spent money that your family didn't have to spend taking loans out and things of that nature. And I think when we start valuing the education piece a little more um, in these decisions, then those things will start changing and start uplifting um, um, all schools. Because there's a lot of schools kids can play at. They just – they choose to go to the ones they think their friends are going to say. They, they Their whole decision is based on that one, I'm committed to so-and-so post that they put on their social media, and they want to see how people are. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's one minute of their life instead of, like Coach Flickner said, 60 years when they look back on their life. Yeah, and there's um, 
you know, in Texas, it's, it's uh, in lo- large part a blessing. There, we have a lot of people who are very involved in kids' lives that are outside of college coaches that volunteer a lot of time and a lot of their money to help young men get opportunities. Um, and I, I think we have to educate the kids and their parents, but just as much, most of them only go through the recruiting process once and they, they don't know. And that, I think we need to um, educate the people that are around them about the different levels um, as, as well. Um, you know, trying to get people to come to our games, like, like Jabari, I've re- appreciated you come to some of our games. You, you know what the Lone Star's like. Um, so when you do have young men that fit, you're not just pumping them to the highest level possible. It's what, what is best um, for you? And we have a lot of people in Texas and the Metroplex who do do that, but there's also some that are just, okay, well, I got to get a really good team next year for the next class. I'm going to pump them highest level possible and not taking the other things into account. But when the kid gets on campus, the only person that has to live with their decision is the kid and their family. It's not the pe- all the people um, with opinions that, that gave them but don't have to live with that responsibility. And so there, there's a lot of really good people, um, and then there's some that maybe um, don't take the time to educate themselves on all, all, all different levels.